Okay. Um, anyway, so let's get started. I got uh, you know quite a bit to cover. Uh, I think you've chosen wisely by coming here this afternoon. Uh, you know, there's uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff here I'd like to show you. Hopefully everything works. Um, I'm carrying uh, about, what, 60, 70 pounds worth of equipment to this conference, so I could easily say I, I've got the most stuff here. Um, you thank you. Way. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, before we, actually, before we start, uh, I'd like to recognize the people. How many open source contributors do we have here in the, in the house? Okay, a few. Uh, you know, basically this project would be nothing if I didn't have anything to build, uh, you know, all this stuff on. Uh, this project, I think I've got 40 plus gems that I use, uh, you know, to make it happen. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, by a round of applause, thank all the open source contributors for uh, spending nights and weekends uh, helping us, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, okay. So before we actually <laughs> really start, uh, you know, I'm a software guy. I'm not an electrical engineer or anything like that. There is a possibility of a you know, small fire that may occur from this equipment here. So I would like you to notice the exit. Already I've got one blocked out, so you can go down that way. So uh, please note uh, your exit path. Uh, okay, a little bit about me, uh, you know, my name is Fernand Galliana. I run the Derail group, the Denver Rails users group. Uh, I also contributed, uh, you know, a couple gems out there. One of them is uh, Zia, which is a graphic package, uh, you know, to integrate with your, uh, you know, Rails, Merb, or Sinatra applications. I uh, also have, uh, you know, the mall, which is, uh, allows you to track uh, user interaction within your website. Uh, performance issues, uh, you know, exceptions, things like that. You can check them out there on uh, GitHub. Okay, home automation. How many people do home automation here? Okay, a few hands. What kind of systems do you guys use? Just X10. X10? X10? Okay. Seems to be the, the popular, uh, you know, uh, model out there. Uh, the cool thing about Xtend is you don't have to, you know, go into drywall and, uh, you know, break walls and wire uh, stuff together. Uh, you know, it's uh, cheap. You know, it's very inexpensive to get into. Uh, the issue is, of course, to so Xtend works by noticing, uh, you know, spikes. You know, in your uh, using your current uh, wiring, and basically when the spike is, is detected. Uh, you know, a light can, you know, go on or off, you know, any kind of devices like that, which is great. Uh, you know, I've used x in my uh, past, and uh, the problem, you know, I would walk in at my house and I had the light turned off and everything was on, right? Like somebody, you know, in the neighborhood used the air dryer or something and it triggered my house to light up. So it's not, uh, you know, very reliable. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, what, what is home automation? You know, what kind of stuff can you do with home automation? So, you know, this is kind of what I would look for, you know, uh, in a home automation system, right? Uh, you know, be able to control lights is great, and, but also I want to integrate, you know, music, and I integrate my pictures and my videos, and my climate control, you know, air conditioning, heater, and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of concern about, you know, security, you know, now with the economical downturn, you know, a lot of people, you know, fear about their safety at their house. Uh, before this, uh, <clears throat> I was talking to my neighbor, you know, she got uh, one of the security services, you know, to uh, help her, you know, preventing her from getting ripped off. And she's spending, you know, 90 bucks a month, you know, with an, an outfit not to get ripped off. Did my mic just go off? Uh, Hello. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's a slide here. You know, it's about, uh, you know, average uh, energy consumption, you know, in a, you know, regular size house. Of course, you know, heating and air conditioning, you know, takes a big chunk of the, you know, the kilowatt that, uh, you know, house consume. Uh, how many people, like, in their house runs a computer 24 hours, one or more computers 24 hours a day? Yeah, <laughs> that same issue. Okay, so you know we, uh, you know maybe uh, you know it's a gig factor or whatever, but we tend to uh, you know consume quite a bit of power at our house. Uh, you know, just nothing you know too terrible here. <clears throat> One thing that's interesting is you know like a regular you know desktop will suck up you know 120, 150 watt or more. 
uh, you know, of power. And you know, it's kind of interesting to see you know, the change you know, in, uh, in the, you know, uh, computing uh, forms where you, know, you, you start seeing you know, a lot of uh, low power devices you know, uh, getting down to 20 watts you know, for a computer, even 13 watts for a computer. So basically, you know, vendors are trying to get into your house uh, you know, basically a new appliance. You can think of it as a new fridge or a dishwasher where you know, they want to try to get a box uh, you know, small computers that will run 24 hours a day, you know, on the low power consumption. Speaking of power, I mean, we are in, a, you know, the energy crisis, right? I mean, you know, the, the grid cannot possibly support, uh, you know, the demand nowadays. Uh, you know, you have, um, uh, you know, basically the cost, right, between, you know, I guess, the, the windows 3 to 6 o'clock, right? The, you know, the power that used to be 2 cents a kilowatt goes up to 80 cents a kilowatt because they have to fire up, you know, uh, gas, uh, uh, you know, uh, powered uh, um, uh, generators and, you know, uh, nuclear possibly. So, uh, you know, it is a concern for each of us to try to you know, limit the amount of energy that we spend with the also the coming in of the you know, electric cars, right? Those things will be plugged into the grid. So, you know, it, it, basically the current infrastructure won't be able to scale. There's a lot of companies, including Google, that uh, basically, you know, get into, uh, trying to tap into your house with the, I guess they call it the power meter. Some, some devices that go, uh, you know, by your uh, power at your house and they'll be able to check, you know, how many kilowatts, you know, you're consuming and if you're going over and things like that, of course, uh, you know, using a website. So for me, you know, I, I actually wanted to look at what is my power consumption? You know, it's like we all have, you know, bank statements, you know, just illustrating, you know, how much we're spending every month. But when it comes to power, you get one bill, you've sucked up, you know, X amount of kilowatts, you know, you owe us such and such money. But you never have a breakdown of where is that power going, right? So uh, you basically have no way to, of knowing. So I think you know what I wanted to look at is how can I monitor my power consumption at my house, right? You know what what's sucking it up. So uh, that's kind of why also I, I got into this project. So when I you know started looking uh, into uh, you know that uh, community, you know I found a few. I wanted to do an open source type system. I didn't want to you know go in and buy you know there's you know prepackaged solution that you can uh, get out there. But I felt, you know, too constrained. You know, I want to, you know, use my skill as a software engineer to write code that I can use, you know, on a daily basis. So, you know, here's a few solutions that, that are out there. Uh, you know, I didn't, you know, uh, I kind of looked at, at each of them and, uh, you know, try to investigate whether it was worth, you know, uh, spending more time. There's different protocol out there. I mean, we already talked about X10 and, you know, Instant in a way. Uh, you know, there's some stuff that require, you know, wiring to your house, but there's also uh, probably most interesting is the uh, ZigBee and Z-Wave, the, the last uh, two protocols. Uh, those are like a radio frequency two-way protocols, so you can, you know, uh, get status and, you know, send commands. Uh, ZigBee is probably, you know, uh, the most industrial uh, uh, solution out there. Uh, big bandwidth network, it's the same. Uh, you know, idea Z-Wave, you know, it's a mesh uh, network, so devices, you know, can basically route, you know, to expand the range. Uh, the one I looked at is Z-Wave, which is uh, kind of more based toward, you know, home automation, right? So there's uh, 200 plus vendors out there, including, you know, Lutron, Levitron, you know, all the, the nice switches that you see out there that are getting into, uh, you know, the Z-Wave protocol because it's uh, low energy, the, you know, the chip is very small and it's easy for them to embed that into their devices. So the one I, the, the one uh, open source system, sorry, the open source system that I uh, wanted to look at was uh, Linux MCE. How many people have heard about Linux MCE? Uh, who too? Okay, good. Uh, basically, it's uh, you know always talking about you know mashup, you know technology mashup. In my opinion, you know Linux MC is like the biggest you know open source project out there because they encompass you know all those concerns that I was listed earlier: telephony and uh, climate control and different protocol. You know Z-Wave, Zigbee, uh, X10, and you know basically they encompass everything into one system. Uh, the source code was actually contributed by a company out in Florida, 
and uh, you know the bulk of it is really uh, you know pretty well done because it doesn't matter really what kind of devices you are talking whether it's an IP device or a Z-Wave device or uh, you know a TV or a stereo you can basically talk to it using a given protocol that I'm going to cover here. So before we start looking at the code you know a quick thing you know the gear uh, you know, I've got, uh, like I said, pretty, a lot of equipment here. Uh, this is an Asus uh, EE box. If you can see it, you can, uh, you know, come afterwards and, and take a look and touch and feel. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a 20-watt uh, computer. It's an uh, uh, Intel Atom processor, and, uh, you know, it's very low power. Uh, 160 gig hard drive uh, under $300. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty uh, accessible price-wise. Then over here, I've got uh, there's a I don't know if you guys can see the blue thing that's flashing. This is uh, you know uh, basically uh, Z-Wave. Uh, you know needs to have a module that uh, recognizes. So you need to register the devices. Uh, you know, so when you buy a new device, you know, at your house, you can uh, walk around that dongle and there's a button on it and you press it and you register that device and they give it an ID and so forth. And then you come back to your computer, plug it in, and now you're ready to emit and receive, uh, you know, Z-Wave command. Uh, then I've got, uh, this is kind of like the geek factor, you know, the <laughs> Glenn this morning actually covered it, it's kind of funny. You know, like a, a physical device that allows me to see what's going on within the system. So I've got a little Arduino board here that basically is registered, you know, I've got a, a rules engine and when the rules fire, it will actually uh, blink a light there on the, on the Arduino board. Then I've got, uh, this is a regular, you know, wired uh, IP camera. Uh, you know, router, speaker system, things like that. And uh, then, you know, another box here, which is a global cache uh, box that allows me to interact, uh, you know, with this system, with my uh, home, uh, you know, amp, uh, TV, and so forth. This is an IR uh, transmitter. So we basically, you know, I can register IR command and then blast my home entertainment center with one of those. Of course, I don't have you know all the devices here, but uh, you know uh, it's the, the main point here is that you can integrate you know different protocols within the same system. Okay, um, so like I mentioned, I contributed a gem out there. Hopefully, uh, people are interested uh, you know in it. It's on GitHub and it's called uh, Our House. Um, all right, so. Um, you know, the bulk, I mean, at the base of the system, the Linux MC system, there's something called the DCE router. And this is really the core where every message goes through the DCE, mess, uh, DCE router uh, to route the message to the appropriate device. The, you know, if you don't remember anything else, you know, about this talk, this is the important slide to, to recall. So uh, here, you know, this is what a DCE message protocol will look like. So the first number is, uh, you know, the uh, from device idea. Uh, let me pause for a second, I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, Linux MC, the, the reason why I uh, opted for it is there was really two things. One, uh, Ruby came bundled with it, which I thought was interesting. Uh, the other, other interesting part of it is they have underneath, uh, you know, MySQL database that basically store uh, all the devices that are available on the network. And those here, those IDs, the 28.0 and so forth, are actually device IDs within the system. So for us, you know, people, uh, you know, Ruby and Rails type guys, you know, having a database persistent store that we can tap into and extract information or store information is, is pretty interesting. So uh, from device zero to device 28, which, you know, happens to be a light. Uh, one basically is the message protocol, whether I want to actually send a command or an event. 184, again, you know, this is a database ID on the uh, command table, uh, basically is turn light on or actually set level on the light. And then the last two parameters are basically uh, what level do you want to dim the light at and, uh, you know, 50 being the value. So uh, part of the architecture here is, uh, you know, you got the DC router, you got your devices and you get a database, right? All of that stuff is already hooked up. This is what you get out of the box, you know, with Linux MCE. 
And then uh, basically my challenge was to integrate a C++ world into a Ruby world, right? So I needed to be able to figure out a way that I wanted to use my skill as a Ruby developer to uh, you know, enhance the system and add technologies that I knew about. So the challenge there was uh, you know, basically using a socket. So the, the, the router uh, you know, will respond. You can open you know, uh, two sockets, one for a command type channel to send commands uh, you know, to the DC router to different devices. The second one is basically receiving events. So when a device fires, you can actually get an event from it. So I basically created uh, something called the RH interceptor and this comes, uh, you know, with the our house jam. It's installed, you know, as a as a bin, uh, you know, sh script, and you register the RH interceptor with the Linux MCE as a device. You know, every in Linux MCE, everything is is a device, and uh, basically, once you are registered, you know, you can manifest interest, saying, you know what, in this system, I'm interested in lighting events and music events and uh, you know. Uh, um, climate control events, and then basically the router, every time you'll get such an event, you will actually forward it to the RH interceptor. So this is the point of integration uh, between the C++ world and Ruby. Then I created uh, you know, something else called uh, Our House, which is a, a web service. So basically the idea of home automation is that Ideally, you don't have to be home to use it. So the, you know, I'll show you later, you know, I've got a, an iPhone app running here. I can be uh, you know, across the world and basically turn my lights off and on you know, at my house. Uh, you know, yeah, this is a gig factor, but if you know, somebody was at your door and you, you know, tripped the sensor and you know, your camera went on, you probably would want to see a notification of what's going on, somebody getting to your backyard. So the Our House web service basically is a you know, service available out there, and I can ping it and get status and send commands uh, into my house system. Okay, so basically I can connect uh, to the database as well and extract information. Um, then, so the interceptor, you know, I wanted to be able to blast stuff, right? So, you know, when you start talking about, you know, many devices at your house, you know, uh, you know they're going to start, you know, uh, spewing events pretty quickly. So what I ended up doing is putting a RabbitMQ, uh, you know, instance up, and the interceptor just, you know, as soon as it gets an event, it just wraps it up and then pushes it on the queue. And then basically, at that level, you know, this is kind of like the interaction level of you creating your own application within the R House uh, framework. So basically, uh, R House application is really one of those Q uh, consumers. So you can have you know, workers to do you know, whatever you want. At that point, you are actually going to get events. Uh, the, the RabbitMQ, uh, how many people are familiar with RabbitMQ? Uh, okay, a few. So basically, it's set up, you know, with an exchange, and every worker, you know, uh, subscribe to that exchange and get events from there. So uh, the stuff that I've done, you know, there's uh, uh, another gem that's called My R House, which is, uh, you know, kind of like sample applications for the, the R House framework. I'm basically given, uh, you know, a rules engine that basically triggers, uh, you know, different events, uh, you know, respond to different events in some ways. I also have a monitor that uh, you know basically you know uh, checks you know lights on and off type event and then you know logs it. So at the end of the month, I actually can go back and see you know what my uh, wattage uh, uh, was you know for my lighting system. Okay, and then uh, let's see. Uh, then I have uh, you know basically uh, the Hot House uh, web service. Uh, which is uh, really the point of integration, right? I mean, you don't have to use, uh, you know, you can use any kind of technology there to tap into the system, right? So it's, uh, you know, Rails app, uh, you know, the Our House uh, web service is actually a Sinatra uh, application. How many people use Sinatra here? Uh, okay, good number. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's, you know, get into a demo. So one thing that's interesting, it's funny because last night I was setting this thing up and actually have a, a Twitter, my house actually tweets. <laughs> and uh, basically, you know, when, uh, you know, I don't have everything tweeting, but, uh, you know, when the lights come on or off, you know, I get a, you know, I send a tweet notification. But also when I play some music, he actually tweets. And this morning I, I got up here in my hotel room 
and I'm checking, you know, my tweet because I'm bored at some time to kill. And uh, you know, somebody actually replied to one of the tweets because I played one of his favorite band uh, <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, so uh, let's jump to a demo. Uh, usually I start that way. I'm kind of uh, maybe too nervous. Um, Let's try this. So here is I've got a you know sensor. It's an occupancy sensor. Basically, this kind of guy is a kind of a three-in-one type thing. You know, it tracks uh, brightness and temperature, and uh, you know whether somebody's in the room or not. And there's also a battery level. So you know this is a wireless uh, Z-Wave device. And uh, you know if I trip it, uh, something should happen. Uh, so uh, music played. Right, uh, the light dimmed uh, 20%. This is the soft mood when you get into your house. Uh, you know, <laughs> basically the, you know, here's what happened, right? So I tripped the event. Uh, it goes through the RH interceptor. It goes through the, the uh, rules engine, and the rules engine says, "Hey, okay, you know, I got, you know, sensor trip, and you know, there's some state there as well." But uh, you know, he actually figures out, okay, well, part of the resolution of this rule is to dim the light to 50% and play Barry White on your stereo system, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me switch this scenario real quick, and I'll show you. So. Um, This is the hard part of the demo because I'm always switching between a bunch of stuff. And okay, so let me play the same thing. Um, so this is what was was ladies in the audience, which we are very fortunate to have. Now, so if I, uh, oh, sorry. OK, so I'm replaying the same thing. Uh, now, basically, I just set a state. You know, I've got a memcache uh, instance you know, running on that box. And uh, you know, I'm going to trip again and see uh, what happens. Hopefully, we get a different resolution. Uh, see, maybe not. Oh, nope. <laughs> Barry again. <clears throat> I always, I always have trouble with that damn sensor. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's uh, you know this. Ah, here we go. So in honor of uh, Stevie Ray, uh, 20 years to anniversary uh, yesterday, and uh, contribute that to uh, Austin folks. So uh, same deal, right? Just to state change in memcache, the light went uh, higher, so 100%, and then uh, Stevie Ray started playing on on the audio. Okay. So uh, now we're going into uh, demo mode. So basically, you know, uh, when I read, wrote the system, I kind of wanted to have like a Rails type environment, right? So I could develop here on my Mac and don't have to be on the on the box. So I've got uh, different environments set up. So here I actually have uh, you know the same thing as the, the script console, right? The so RH console, the RHS console, and that gives you you know the, the same uh, level of interaction that you will would have you know within a Rails application. So uh, you know, I did mention I've got a database underneath me, and I built you know those uh, Active Record uh, you know models to uh, look at it. So uh, you know, if I did something like uh, this, you know, so uh, oh, <laughs> oh dear, uh, let me do this. Can you guys see this? Uh, basically, I just uh, looked for a device uh, with ID uh, 36, which is a lamp. And basically, if I can pull this device now and ask it, uh, hopefully. So basically, this device has uh, three commands I can send on, right? It's uh, on, off, and set level. This is on, on that light over here. Similarly, I can uh, you know, look at device 36, which is uh, this camera right here. And again, you know, I can ask it, you know, what kind of commands you know, do you support? So you know, here I can you know, take a snapshot and move the camera uh, left, right, and so forth. So let's interact with those devices, right? So um, let's see here. Well, I'm OK, I get my cursor back. <laughs> 
Okay, so basically, you know, part of the web service, the IaaS web service, I got two uh, set of commands. One is kind of like the human mode, where actually will address uh, devices by name, and the other one is kind of more of a machine mode, where I can access things, you know, with their IDs. So uh, part of this is, uh, you know, it's kind of a utility really to the web service, so I don't have to know the detail about, you know, which port and, and so forth. Uh, you know, I wrote this little, uh, you know, command uh, interaction uh, API. So basically here, I'm gonna send a human command, uh, you know, this light is in my office uh, at home, and I'm actually gonna tell it to go off. So now the light is going off, and you see the little Arduino board, you know, that basically the Arduino, you know, catch those rules engines, right? So, you know, red means off and then back on. Uh, you know, similarly, I can do, uh, you know, the same thing. I can actually uh, dim it. Right? So here is the set level command that we saw earlier. And, uh, oops, it's gone too far. Uh, take my word for it. So basically it's, uh, you know, uh, the set level command, you know, dim to 50%. Okay, so this is interacting with the Z-Wave, which actually uh, I didn't show you. Uh, you know, basically plug into the wall, you know, you have this little, uh, you know, dimmer thing here. And this is a Z-Wave device, right? This reg was registered with that dongle over here. And, you know, that's what it is. So, you know, with a regular Z-Wave without matching, you have about 100 feet uh, worth of distance, uh, you know, unobstructed that you can run this stuff at. Okay, so this is fine. So this is for um, the light. Now if I switch to, uh, you know, my camera, I can actually uh, see. All right, so I'm going to tell the camera to do something. So the camera was, uh, ooh. oh, device uh, 36. <coughs> oh, it's uh, IP cam, I think. Oh, yeah, of course you can, uh, let's see. Um. So that's you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me issue that command. Hopefully, uh, something happens here. Uh, where am I? <laughs> oh, here I am. Okay. Uh, so let me reissue that. Hopefully, something happens to the camera. Yeah. So it, I, I don't, I'll do it again because it's kind of uh, very subtle. Uh, so I should be moving uh, left, I guess. Yeah, okay, so, uh, you know, and then I can uh, move it left as well. Okay, that, that's fine. Uh, okay, and so part of this now, if I brought my Twitter guy here, so I've got, uh, you know, my our house here. So, you know, uh, basically it's going to be delayed a little bit. Uh, you know, my house is tweeting on lighting and uh, music events. So you can see, uh, you know, Barry White, you know, playing Stevie Ray Vaughan. And the, da the, you know, the, the lamp was uh, turned off, right? Uh, let's see if I got any new things. No. Okay. Uh, let's go back. <coughs> If you have any questions, feel free to blast. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to run uh, probably over. So, uh, you know, let's look at some code. So, uh, the interceptor, like I said, you know, load this configuration, you know, from a configuration file. Uh, it's kind of like Rails, so you got different environments. You know, I've got a, a production environment, testing environment, dev environment, so forth. So, in this case, you know, I just uh, load up the YAML file. And the interceptor is actually registered as a device, you know, uh, uh, a generic device, a virtual device with the Linux MC box. So that executable is actually managed by uh, Linux MC. So when the system starts up, you know, it's going to fire me up and I'll be like already hooked up and ready to send the events in and out. Uh, 
Then, you know, this is the configuration file here, you know, nothing too interesting, you know, the ports. Uh, the main thing here that's interesting is the event. So, you know, here I'm, I'm registered to listen to, you know, camera, lighting event, uh, security, climate, so forth. And then a different environment that I can run this thing in. Uh, so, like I was explaining, you know, I've done socket programming before. It's not that much fun, but it's actually funnier in uh, Ruby. Uh, so these are actually the two sockets I open, you know, the, you know, in, event socket, command, so command socket, and then, uh, you know, basically uh, just pure, you know, connect to the, to the router and then, you know, notify that, you know, I want, you know, hook up to it now. And then uh, basically, you know, the register event loop that parses that event uh, YAML in the, in the configuration file and just registers, you know, interest in those events. So when the router actually gets those events, he knows that I need to get those forwarded to me. Okay, and then uh, basically we have, uh, you know, the rule system. Rule B is the gem that I use, uh, you know, out there, which is a rules engine in, in Ruby. And it's, you know, pretty easy to use, really. Uh, you know, you just you know, fire up the rule engine and then I match, you know, the rule based, uh, in this case, you know, the description of the device. So in this case, uh, it's a uh, design player is actually the CD player on uh, the Linux MCE box. And I can, uh, you know, look at what type of event, whether it was, uh, you know, play or stop or pause. And based on those things, I had a little switch statement here that basically tell the Arduino, uh, you know, go ahead and blink and so forth, right? Um, Okay, then, uh, you know, this is part of the Sinatra application. It's very simple, right? Uh, you know, if I get a post for a command, I'm basically going to turn around and, and, and you know, call this API here that knows how to connect to the router and how to, uh, you know, open up a socket and send uh, that command forward. Any questions so far? You guys are pretty quiet. I'm worried. It must be after lunch. Everybody's kind of digesting the pizza or something. <laughs> Cool. All right. So uh, this is, uh, you know, basically the, you know, the actual send command. Uh, you know, I'm using RFUS, again, another gem here to, uh, you know, connect to the web service and, uh, you know, push out the commands. Uh, you know, nothing too uh, terrible here. Okay. So uh, jump into another demo. This, you know, supposed to be very uh, hands-on type stuff. Uh, yes, sir. So what's the, uh, what's the Arduino for? for? So, okay. You know, basically, you know, uh, I've got a lot of events coming in, right? Those devices, you know, fire up a lot of events. And really, instead of like tailing the log file to figure out, you know, especially I'm, I'm doing a lot of changes back and forth, I can just get a visual cue. It's kind of the same thing as the packet uh, Glenn gave out this morning, you know, the, the little uh, paper thing. Uh, yes, you know, it must be like modern age now. We can actually cooler devices to do to do that kind of stuff. So basically, I just I just get a visual signal that I got the event, and I you know I'm now you know with the colors I actually know what to look for, right? So I know if I got a red, I got an off. If I got a green, I got an on. So it's basically just for me to monitor this. Yeah, and plus, you know, it was kind of a geek thing, too, you know, because I wanted to use an Arduino for the longest time, but I couldn't find a really good scenario to use it in. <laughs> so now I have one, right? And eventually, hopefully, it'll become, you know, some kind of a uh, piece of furniture in my house, right? I can have a glow, uh, glob type thing, you know, and <laughs> yeah. So that's the idea behind that. Thank you for the question. All right, so. Um, Let's do this. So let me show you what I did. So, you know, I have this command level, uh, you know, API that I showed, you know, in the IRB console. So now let's look at, uh, you know, other things that I got. Um, so basically I built this uh, web, you know, dashboard type thing, right? So, you know, my light is dim right now, so I'm, you know, 50 watt, uh, you know, lamp. So I'm, uh, you know, 50%, right? Uh, my thermostat, you know, same thing at home, right? I can control my thermostat as a Z-Wave thermostat, so I can, you know, between three and six, I'm not home. You know, what do I care about the AC being on? I can just turn it off from my office, right? Uh, oh, speaking of this, actually, you know, this is our house, but all this stuff I'm showing here, you can apply that to your office. You know, how many people live at night with your monitor on? Be honest. <laughs> you know, leave your monitor on, you know, all day, right, all night. Yeah, so same deal, right? You can use that around, the, around your office, you know, the, the whole uh, X10 uh, lava lamp thing. You can do it cooler with this kind of stuff, right? And you are in Ruby, <laughs> right? You can integrate to a cruise control right there. 
Anyway, so uh, you know the thermostat. Here's you guys again. You know this uh, little uh, you know portal, and then back here, you know this is kind of like a chart of uh, you know my usage, you know my lighting, right? So I don't know, it's uh, you know a month's worth of stuff here or whatever. And basically, I can look at my consumption and see, you know, like the, the, the things. This lamp is actually really in my office at home, and it's a dark room. So it just can of tell you how much hours I actually put in. Uh, those uh, black lines are probably like weekends where I try to, you know, ease off the gig factor. Anyway, so from here, you know, I added um, little things so you can, you know, control the thermostat. I mean, it's very simple, you know, off, uh, you know, heat, cool, and, and the temperature. Um, this, I don't have that device here, so I'm not going to show anything. And then, you know, the lamp control, so I should be able to bring, you know, the, you know, this thing to higher. Did, did it do anything? Yeah. Uh, it's brighter. You know, turn it down. Right? And the Arduino should kind of follow here. Um, same thing on the camera, you know, I can control it as well. So imagine, you know, those things are really devices at your house, right? Somebody ring the doorbell, Z-Wave, boom, you get an event, right? And it's okay, well, who is it, right? You can, you know, be in anywhere and see, you know, their mug, you know, right there on your, on your dashboard and figure out whether you should uh, let them in or not. And, you know, same deal here, you know, I should be able to, you know, pen, hopefully it does something. Yeah, so we moved, yeah? Okay. All right, so this is one interface, right? Uh, which is fine, you know, it's usable, you know, if you have a you know, web browser you have, uh, you know, access to, you know, that's cool. Um, and then uh, let's look at something else now. So if I can find my cursor. Um, the big one for me, you know, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, on the road and, and at, not at home very often. And I kind of want to keep track, you know, of things, what things are going on. And of course, you know, this is my idea of my new remote control. You know, I want basically this and this to be my house uh, automation system, right? Uh, I'm tired of fumbling with, uh, you know, 15, 20 remotes. You know, through the years, you kind of accumulate them. You don't even have the device anymore, but you keep the remote because, I don't know, it was cool or you don't remember where it was used at. So this is the same thing, right? This is basically this application here, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, an iPhone uh, UI uh, on top of it. And, you know, basically same deal. You know, I should be able to cruise around. And, uh, you know, iPhone-y doesn't render that well, but, uh, you know, you get, you get the idea. Uh, you know, so I should be able to turn the light off here or not. Um, let me reload this. I think it's a good name, iPhone-y, because it doesn't really work all the time. <laughs> uh, so I'm toast. Okay, so anyway, take my word for it. Here it is right here. So I'm actually going to uh, go in. Actually, I could do this. Right? <laughs> Should be <laughs> do something like that. I don't know. Is that, it's kind of like Blair Witch Project, maybe a little bit. Uh, so I should be able to, uh, you know, hit the light, and uh, you know, so basically it lists, you know, my lights that are available. Can you see that? I don't know. Uh, oh well. So I'll just show it like that. Uh, so basically, if I hit off. Uh, so the light will go off, yeah. Uh, feel free to give me some encouragement here. <laughs> I'm sweating back here. <laughs> I have carried about 70 pounds worth of equipment. I have no things to wear. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, it's been two days since I was aware of the same underwear. Okay. <laughs> but enough about me. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so let's see. So here I got the light, you know, I've got my lamps. Um, you know, uh, same deal here, you know, I've got the a camera portal, you know, so I can look uh, at you guys. You know, same thing, you know, I can, you know, activate it and so forth. Um, you know, and here it's nothing special really. I mean, you know, uh, 
you know, there's the, you know, um, iTunes remote, you know, you can get you know, from Apple, right? You can play your music from your iPhone. Well, this is a little bit cooler. I can control the whole house with this thing, right? So I basically build, uh, you know, a thing to ac access my music library. And Linux MC is really cool, right? You, you know, I've got a 500 gig, uh, you know, hard drive at home with all my media, you know, photos and videos and, and music and so forth. I just plug it in, it detects the device, it'll go in and scan it, index everything, and boom, it's available. You do nothing, right? Uh, so I don't know, what are you guys in for? Uh, B-size player? Okay, let's try that. All right, so, uh, you know, here I've got my album. Uh, should be able to pick that. And you'll pick a song. And I got, you know, play, pause, and volume, so I should be able to hit play. Great. Okay, play. Right? I'm playing music. Um, so I can pause it. Right? <laughs> I think I might have hit more than once. Uh, okay, so I should be able to pause. Right. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I think I'm too nervous. I, I hit it probably more than once. Anyway, I got a volume here. So it's lower. Yeah, that works. Uh, anyway, so this is kind of like uh, definitely uh, the remote of the future, I think. OK. Does music come directly from that phone, or does it like, control the computer? Or? Yeah, I mean, the music is playing right here. So uh, yeah, that's a very good question. I should uh, clarify this a bit. So um, Linux MC uh, comes out of my fridge. Uh, so Linux MC actually come in uh, different flavors, right? You have uh, basically a core. You know, you can uh, set up as a core, which is like uh, you know my ideal home entertainment center, right? It's in my basement. It's a racquetball. You know, it's kind of a maybe macho kind of thing, but you know, a big disc. You know, I can store all the media and so forth. And then you have uh, you know what's called um, a media center, and that device will live next to your entertainment center, right? So if you have a TV in the kitchen or whatever, you will have a machine there, or in your uh, you know. Uh, to a bedroom or a living room and so forth, you will have a you know, device that basically is part of a Linux MC network, but it's very, you know, it doesn't have to have a big disk, you know, it just has to be able to boot and have a video card on it so that you can control it uh, you know, remotely. And then this is what I have here, which is basically called the hybrid mode. This is both a core and a media center in one box, right? So uh, this model of uh, SUC box is the you know, uh, 302 uh, model. It's just you know, uh, DVI you know, output for video. Uh, it's not really that great. Uh, the newer versions have uh, you know, HDMI, so you can you know, plug in directly into your TV. And you know, Linux MC, I, I highly recommend going to the site and checking out the videos. Some of the people out there are really doing some crazy stuff with this thing, right? They have the gyro remotes, right? So you'd be like watching a movie. You move the remote that way. The, you know, the movie goes fast forward and then back. It, it's really cool. And, and all the menu system is integrated within your TV set, right? So you fly over, it's kind of like a, you know, the Mac, you know, uh, um, you know, menu bar, you know, it will actually fly up and show you, you know, the various movies, things like that. So, you know, do check it out. It's, it's really cool. Okay, so that ends this demo. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, we're almost done. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, references, so Linux MC site, uh, a lot of good information there. You know, they have a, a wiki for, you know, how to do things like that. Uh, basically, Linux MC is based on uh, Ubuntu or Kubuntu, uh, Debian, you know, uh, Linux, and, you know, sits right on top of it. Uh, the installation is... Uh, you know, for, for this box, really, I kind of sweated a little bit to install it because the Intel video is not really that well supported. Uh, you know, if you have, a, you know, an Ion processor or an NVIDIA uh, card, and you don't have to use one of those, right? If you have uh, something in your basement, you know, that you haven't used, a no P5 or whatever, you can drag it out and install it on there. Uh, then there's the Z-Wave Alliance, if you want to read more about uh, the Z-Wave protocol. 
And Mikasa Verde is a site where you have like different you know, devices and dimmers and uh, light switches and things like that. Uh, my links, uh, unfortunately, I don't blog as often as I should. Uh, you know, I'm not that big of a blogger. Uh, I'll try to do a little more. Uh, basically, I set up a Google group, uh, our house gem, if you want to join. And I, I'd love to see what you guys can come up with if you're interested in getting into that project. Uh, again, the Git repo for uh, our house and my our house uh, gems are out there. Uh, my email address and uh, my uh, uh, Twitter handle. Uh, you know, this is, you know, in my experience, you know, when I get this working, and maybe I'm just a geek, but I thought it was really cool. You know, the fact that I can write code to control physical device is really interesting to me. You know, this is kind of the fun part. And this is, you know, in a way, you know, I want to make you as fat as the guys on Wally, -E, right? Because you become <laughs> lazy, right? Why do I need to go downstairs to turn the light off, right? I can just hit that phone. So, and usually the same deal, you know, I'm leaving my house, you know, I'm on my street, and I notice I left the light, you know, in my office on, right? I just reach for the iPhone, boom, you know, it's off, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, so really and truly, you know, this project is about you guys, right? I mean, you know, I've, unfortunately, I've wrote some code for, for a long time, you know, probably more than I like to admit, but this is kind of an opportunity to use your chops for yourself, right? You can write code and use your code, you, so you become, you know, the customer, you become the developer, you become the architect, and you can use that code on an everyday basis. You know, it's, it's kind of cool of a concept, I think. So find something that passionates you and you can, you know, uh, find a way to automate or write software for it and, and use it for yourself as a hobby. I think that's a, that's a, a great thing you can do. Uh, okay, questions? Uh, you know, thank you so much. You guys have been great. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please be accurate. <laughs> we only have time for just a couple questions. We're right a little behind here. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take like two, three questions. Yes, sir. You mentioned you started looking at this because you wanted to measure power use. What did you use to, to actually measure and, mm -hmm. and how much of your house were you measuring? Okay, so basically uh, the way I integrate is, uh, you know, of that uh, RabbitMQ. So I've got a listener, a monitor that basically, you know, goes through the event. So when I see a lighting event, an on or off, I actually log it somewhere in the database. So now that graph that I was showing in the bottom of the dashboard, this is the result of looking at the re of that on the database. So now I can easily compute, you know, the, the usage of my power, right? So I've got, you know, timed entries on when the lights were turned on and off. And you should be able to, you know, in essence, get, uh, you know, kilowatt, uh, you know, rating from that. So that's, that's the idea behind that. Uh, there was another hand. Yes, sir. Where can we find your slide deck here? What's that? Where can we find your slide deck here? Um, I don't know. I guess those guys probably will post it somewhere. Or? Yeah, I think we're going to be posting something like that afterwards. And we'll make it after that tomorrow. And I've got, uh, you know, it's very similar. I did uh, this presentation at RailsConf uh, this year. So you should be able to find it on SlideShare, I think. Uh, so each time you, like, dim the light, how do you know how much power it is? Yeah, so that's the thing. So basically, I, I, I got the event. I know, you know, the, the, the level of dim. So, so I, now I can figure out, you know, what the wattage was for the dim light, right? So does the Z-Wave allow you to get the power spec of, like, how much it how much is it going to change? No, so that's a very good question. Actually, you would have to register. I have not done that. Uh, basically, you would have to register, you know, what kind of device and what kind of wattage it is, right? So that is something that you would have to do to, uh, I, very good question. So you yeah. will do something like, something like a, a kilowatt kind of a thing to find out how much does it use, right? Yes, yes, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because they had uh, an article on the, uh, you know, some rag, and they actually were showing that even a power strip with everything off will actually still yeah. suck up, you know, the ghost power, they call it. So, yeah, I don't think you can get to, you know, a very precise measurement, but it's getting a, a vague idea whether you left, you know, two, 300 watt uh, floodlights in your, in your uh, backyard on, you know, for the last two weeks, you know, uh, was going to take, take a dent in your budget. Uh, some hands, there were some other hands. Yes, sir. Yeah, what would you say the cost of looking this up to a normal house would be? 
Uh, okay, that's a very good question. So I already mentioned, so this is, uh, you know, $300. The devices themselves, you know, there's different grade, and it also depends whether you're doing uh, low voltage lighting or just line voltage lighting, right? The dimmers are different. Typically, you know, uh, the starting price of a Z-Wave dimmer, enabled dimmer, is about 10 bucks more than what you would pay for a normal thing. So. Uh, yeah, it's an expensive, uh, you know, uh, endeavor in, in some way, right? Uh, you want to be able to get devices that you can rip off at the end when you move out and move it to the next house. And of course, you know, Lutron, Levitron, that makes you know, some bitching uh, dimmer, you know, with little LCD and stuff like that. Those are going to be like way higher, you know, ninety, hundred dollars. <laughs> You know, but those are probably low voltage dimmers. Uh, you know, this guy was about uh, fifty dollars. You know, this is just uh, you know regular sensors. Uh, the the Z-Wave dongle was like seventy dollars, I think. Uh, this was uh, I think a hundred bucks for the IR. So the notifications that you have here, it, it, it will send a tweet. Could it? You, you can do, now you are in Ruby, right? Yeah, so now you have this rule engine that tell you can do, you, you know, if you want to send, you know, SMS to yourself or whatever, you can absolutely do that. Yeah. So we're going to get Okay. Thank you very much, guys. You've been great. Thanks. <laughs>